Alright fellas, it's time for the comparison you've all been waiting for. Which one is the better everyday trainer? Is it the Hoka One One Mach 4? Or is it the Nike Zumax Pegasus Turbo 2? Let's compare them and contrast them and let's find out the good stuff. What is up everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Phil Blatocha. As you can guess by the intro and the title of this video, we are comparing two everyday daily trainers being the Hoka One One Mach 4 and the Nike Zumax Pegasus Turbo 2 in terms of their comparing and contrasting, their similarities, differences, which specs are better than the others, and can the Mach 4 in fact be the solid predecessor for the Pegasus Turbo 2 in a market where the shoe is starting to fade out. So before we get into it, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, you guys know how this all goes. And uh, yeah, if you're a continued supporter of the channel, love you guys so much. Without further ado, here are the specs for both shoes respectively, and I think we're just going to start with those right away. So let's kick it off with the general specs of both shoes. Of course, let's start with the Pegasus Turbo 2. Of course, the shoe is so much lighter than the Mach 4 being at 7.2 ounces, with a stack height offset of about 10 millimeters going across where in the forefoot it's 18, and in the heel it's about 28, which gives it a type of ride where your midfoot and forefoot should be the more prominent striking point of this shoe and overall that's supposed to be a much more natural stride in this shoe and it's built in this fashion to do so. So now in this mesh upper it's pretty breathable in my opinion whenever I was running in the rain or anything like that it doesn't really the moisture doesn't sink into the shoe too often it dries off in a relatively okay time not nearly as great as something like a fly knit type of shoe in the Nike spectrum of the market but it will do just okay because again there isn't a whole lot of mesh material or any kind of heavy material on the shoe whatsoever to begin with so the water absorption isn't too extreme i guess from at least my personal experience also in this heel collar we just do have a very snug a very fit type of action going on here not a whole lot of plush which again just makes it no extra parts on the shoe no additional you know weight that could be uh making the shoes ride a little bit different from what it needs to be it's definitely an upgrade from the pegasus turbo one which did have a lot more plush and it made the fit kind of tricky with the shoe overall the one thing in the shoe that's kind of weird is the toe box does run a little bit wide so in some cases you may have to drop down a half size just to make sure you don't get any like black toes from the striking point of this shoe now moving on to the mach 4 Obviously from the top point here, there's a huge difference in the stack height where in the forefoot it's about 30 millimeters and in the heel it's about 35, giving it an offset of about 5 millimeters, which cuts basically the Pegasus Turbo 2 in half. And the difference, of course, then is the muscle groups that you'll be utilizing when you're running. So in this case, you'll utilize more calf, more soleus muscle because that offset is a lot more natural and less prone to making you strike with your uh, forefoot and midfoot. In fact, it is more midfoot friendly to use this shoe, but you can still use the forefoot as necessary. In the upper, this is something I don't like compared to the Pegasus Turbo 2, which is that it is, again, it's a generic mesh, and there's a lot of plush in the shoe collar area and kind of in the inside of the shoe, but the consequence of this is that whenever moisture gets in the shoe, it essentially stays there for a little while, and then you can start feeling the moisture and the water build up, and it makes the shoe weigh a little bit more and it makes the ride a little bit uncomfortable. So if you're planning on running in the rain, I personally would not recommend running with the Mach 4 in this particular case. So in terms of general specs, between both shoes, I would say the Pegasus Turbo 2 is currently rolling as the winner in this category because of its lightweight, its no extra parts, it's a no BS type of shoe, whereas the Mach 4 has a little bit of room for comfort more or less, but the trade-off is that you do have to run in something that weighs a little bit more. Now, in terms of the technologies in the midsole and the outsole and the bottoms of the shoe, both of them, this is where, again, I have been comparing them, it, in my mind, very often because of their builds, respectively, with their foam structures. So in this particular case, the ProFly is this red layer of foam running on the top, which is a very similar equivalent to the Zoom X layer, which is running on this top piece here on the Pegasus Turbo 2. Both foams are very soft, but very aggressive and very responsive in terms of strike points. So you do experience a lot of compression and the decompression works well in tandem with both shoes on their respective bottom layers, which in this case, this is a React foam that's running on the bottom and this is an EVA foam. So now that we've identified the midsole and outsole's designs respectively, 
you're probably asking which design is ultimately better. And now this is kind of a tricky question because there's a couple things to consider here. First and foremost, in the Pegasus Turbo 2, the outsole does have additional rubber which you can use on the road respectively. But the trick here, especially in this uh, particular shoe, my right foot, is that after a certain distance, it gets shredded to a point where you start losing a little bit of grip. Now, this is, again, a little bit questionable. Maybe this is just something I'm experiencing from my shoe. At this point, I think I have just about 200, maybe 250 miles on this shoe. So this becomes a little bit tricky with this particular shoe, at least from my personal experience. That being, what's the shoe's life exactly? Now, I've seen pictures of people put in more than 600 kilometers or like 350, 400 plus miles on the shoe, and they don't have the same damage that I have on this Pegasus Turbo 2. So from at least what I'm experiencing here, this outsole is pretty good at the very beginning of its runs, but then what happens is this the smoothing out of the rubber starts making you lose that grip you're going to have on the ground, and in turn, the foam compression and decompression you thought you were going to have starts losing a little bit of its efficiency because of slippage you may be experiencing. So for me, right now this shoe's at a phase where it's not able to compete nearly as well as the Mach 4. Now that being said, the Mach 4 only has about 100 plus miles and it looks something like this. But here's the trade-off. I don't know how the EVA foam is going to more or less respond to my strikes after 200 plus miles. Maybe this EVA foam or this rubber, I guess whatever you want to call it, is going to start degrading to a point where it also loses a lot of grip and it just starts slipping while I'm striking. It's going to be something worth considering and observing as I go along, but as of right now, both of them from a technology standpoint are pretty much an equal match as far as I'm concerned, because I understand that principally it's a soft foam on the top and a harder foam on the bottom, where the compression of the soft foam with the responsiveness of the bottom foam will give you a nice strong decompression where you don't lose as much efficiency as long as the shoes are both in a good shape respectively. I originally, like a few weeks back, said this is totally the replacement because both shoes, in their peak shapes, you constantly had this responsiveness from the foam where whatever you gave it is what you got back from it. You weren't like getting foam fatigue, which you can experience in a one layer type of foam shoe. And that's an awesome thing. That means you can just keep going on a day to day basis, maybe twice daily, in that type of shoe. And you're all, always just going to have a great time with that type of trainer regardless. So the problem here, of course, as I mentioned, is the Pegasus Turbo 2 is slowly reaching its end of line in terms of Nike's market as of right now. If they release like a Pegasus Turbo 3 or rebrand and relaunch the Pegasus Turbo 2, good, then we don't need to really look at the Mach 4. But let's say the Pegasus Turbo 2 is gone for sure. From what I understand, I'm thinking personally that the Mach 4 is a pretty good replacement because of its build, because of how it feels. Despite it having a little bit more plush and a little bit of a stiffness, it does equal out pretty well to the Pegasus Turbo 2. Now, I've had people tell me that the Rebel version 2 is one of the replacements for the Pegasus Turbo 2 that people have been seeing on the market. I have not tried the Rebel version 2 at the filming of this video. It is on my list, and if it is in fact a pretty good Pegasus Turbo 2 replacement, I will definitely try to compare and contrast those types of shoes and give you my full, you know, opinion on that. So, the question here ultimately now is which one is the better everyday trainer? As of right now, they're both very equal in my opinion because of the pros and cons that are pretty much aligned with them. I don't like the lifespan of the Pegasus Turbo 2 getting to about 250 miles before it goes flat. I don't like the breathability of the Mach 4 and its ability to absorb a moisture. I love the way this shoe feels with the mesh and basically this upper design and its tight snug fit, but I also love that the Mach 4 has this comfortable heel collar and it has a very comfortable smooth ride despite the stiffness of the shoe overall. So there's a lot of trade-offs here and I can tell you comfortably that I love both shoes just about as an equal level. The only difference here majorly is perhaps one of the ways to define or to distinguish which one you should use on a day-to-day -day basis is maybe what your racing shoe on race day obviously is going to be. So as I've mentioned before, the Alpha Fly is currently my racing shoe and the specs of the Mach 4 
are very close to that shoe because that shoe has about a four or five millimeter offset with like 39 in the heel, 34 in the forefoot. And this is just a smidgen different than the Mach 4, but it has a very similar feel and weight as the Alpha Fly. So if I wanted to train in something that resembles the weight and the stack height offset of that shoe, the Mach 4 would be my play, despite the fact that it doesn't have air pockets or a carbon plate. Now, if I was to train in something like the Vaporfly, which is like my secondary race shoe, it would definitely be the Pegasus Turbo 2. That would be my go-to for a fact, because the Vaporfly is more of that 8mm offset. This one's got a 10mm offset, so those two are a little bit closer. Despite the fact that the ultimate stack height of the shoe is slightly less than the Vaporfly, it's all about that midfoot four foot striking area that you want to simulate in your daily training and of course the shoe is very light similar to the Vaporfly so in terms of weight category this is also a good shoe to kind of simulate the weight and the feel despite the fact that there's no carbon plate in the shoe that type of ride so hopefully this comparison was good enough for now if I have to do a follow-up I definitely will there's a lot I still would like to discuss, but I don't want to make this video like 30 minutes long, you know what I mean? So, I think I'm going to end it here and just tell you both shoes are really awesome. If you can find the Pegasus Tur uh, Turbo 2 on the market, try to buy one. You'll definitely love it. If not, try to get the Mach 4. It's pretty new on the market, relatively speaking. I know that some people couldn't get their hands on this shoe because of, you know, an inventory shortage or something, but this is like new. It's coming out. If you're good with experimenting outside the Nike brand, this is the way to go in my opinion until I can test out the Rebel version too. So I think we're going to end the comparison video here. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel. If you agree or disagree with the assessment, definitely comment that below. Let me know what you think uh, about both shoes respectively. If you like one more than the other or you know you hate them both, just let me know. So with that in mind, I'm going to end the video here. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys real soon.